Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. God started dealing with me about calling fear out. Calling fear out. You know when you call somebody out? Calling fear out. When you look back at the entrance of fear, it was with Adam and Eve, and I put it in your notes from Genesis 3. He says, Then the man and his wife, verse 8, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, and he said, Where are you? Adam answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. You know, we could simply say that fear came as a result of sin, but I want us, I want us to, to dissect that a little bit more. Yes, fear came as a result of sin. They had walked with God um, naked before him emotionally and physically without fear, uh, since the day of their creation, but now that they've sinned against God, then sin came in and fear came in. And once they heard God's words, they had chosen to listen to another. And, and when we're going to be talking about fear today and, and calling it out for what it is and getting it out of our lives, we've got to look at the original. Always, I like how I think it's Mark that always says that you go back to the genesis of things. And you can learn so much about the fear you're dealing with by looking at the origin of fear. So it wasn't, I mean, I don't want to just simply say fear came in because sin came in. When sin came in, what happened? It, they, they started listening to the voice of another other than God. And you can see how fear would come in when you start listening to the voice of someone else other than God, whether that's the doctor or whether that's a manipulated relationship no matter what that is, when you start listening to another voice other than the voice of God or one that lines up with God, fear is going to naturally, it's going to naturally come in. Where they once knew what God would do, they don't have a clue what God's going to do. That's why they're hid. They don't know. They've never walked with God except in truth and love now they're walking in fear because now they don't know what God's going to do. This is another reason people walk in fear. They don't have a clue what God's going to do. That's why he sent Jesus. It says Jesus was the express image of the Father. If you want to know what God will do, what God won't do, you look at Jesus. Fear makes you think, you don't know what God's going to do. When God gave you his plan, he gave you his word, he gave you his mode of operation right there in that book, and then he put it into life in Jesus Christ where we could literally watch it and see it. We know what God's going to do because we saw what Jesus did. What's, gonna do, what's God going to do when, if I sin? Well, what did Jesus do when people sinned? I'm telling you, knowledge of God will, will get rid of fear. Adam and Eve were in a place where they didn't have this knowledge. They didn't know what they were dealing with anymore. They once knew where, God, where they stood with God. Now they don't. People don't know where they stand with God. That causes fear. They don't know if God will. They know God can. They just don't know if God will. Why? Because they don't know where they stand with God. Let me tell you where you stand with God. You stand in Christ Jesus that's where you stand with God. Wherever Jesus stood with God, that's where you stand with God because the scripture says you're in him. Isn't that a relief? It's not my performance. It's my acceptance. It's my acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord. And he gave me his righteousness, his right standing with God as the scripture says, a gift. So whatever you're fearing and you don't know if God will, We've got to, the way we get rid of that fear is to understand where you stand with God. You are in Christ Jesus. But I mess up. I mess up. Only one, there's only been one that didn't mess up. So, you know, you're in the majority here. But you're in Christ. 
And that changes everything. I love that God, when they hid and were afraid, God called fear out. Where are you? Why are you not standing in front of me in this moment that you messed up? Why are you not standing in front of me in this moment that you discovered you're naked? Why are you not standing in front of me? Why are you hiding? Verse 11 says, And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Who told you something different than what I said? Who told you something? Because God knew if it was producing fear, it wasn't from him. They were afraid. So he knew they had taken something from somebody else. If you're in fear, you've taken something from somebody else. If you're in fear, you're listening to something other than what God has said. Call fear out. That's what God just did. He called it out. Love never produces fear. Never. I don't care if it's in a relationship. Oh, I love you. Well, if there's any fear in that relationship, you're looking at the wrong kind of love. Because manipulation, that ain't love. That's fear. So it doesn't matter what area of life we're talking about, whether it's going into the future, Jason, you know, if there's fear, it's not love. We've got to look at something. We're listening to something wrong. If there's fear... God's not in it because love never produces fear. Faith is generated by love. Faith is generated by love. I deal with a lot of people who try to operate in faith out of technique. Well, this, and, and I get it. I talk a lot about technique. Faith comes by hearing and... Okay, y'all know why y'all know that? Because we preach that all the time. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How do you get faith? You hear the Word. But the way you activate faith is out of relationship. How you know by Jesus' stripes you are healed is out of relationship. And we've got to get these two things together. We've got to get technique and relationship together because faith is generated by love. You won't activate it if you don't know God loves you. If you won't know that he provided it because he loves you, if you don't know he did it because he loves you, your faith won't ever get activated. Go with me to Galatians 5. I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified. Starting in verse 5, Galatians 5, 5. For we, not relying on the law... But through the Holy Spirit's help, by faith, anticipate and wait for the blessing and for the good which our righteousness and right standing with God to hope. The, the Amplified adds a lot of words here, so I'm going to try to read it faster so that we don't lose its meaning. For we, not relying on the law, but through the Holy Spirit's help, by faith, anticipate and wait for the blessing and good for which our righteousness and right standing with God, our conformity to his will and purpose, thought and action, causes us to hope. For if we are in Christ Jesus, then neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. In other words, it's not outward actions that counts for anything like the law did. The law of Moses did. It was all about outward actions. This is something deeper than that that causes us to anticipate, not fear, but and to anticipate and wait for the blessing and the good. You know what fear is? It's anticipation of the bad. But this causes us to anticipate for the blessing and the good and for hope. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. King James Version, faith worketh by love. But you look that word worketh up, it is where we get our word energize from it's the faith that is activated and that is energized by love that accomplishes something and a lot of times we get into that 
outward actions of faith and we forget that part that actually drives us to use our faith and that is God did this for you God did this for you he provided this healing for you and it's that love that will cause you to say yes yes I take it thank you it's love that causes that to take place so if we're in fear we're lacking understanding of God Whatever that area is that you're, you're dealing with fear in, that you have reoccurring fear in, then we're lacking in understanding God in that area of our lives. And if we want to get rid of the fear, we need to get some understanding. First thing people need to know before they can operate in faith is, is it God's will? And, and people really struggle with this. And they end their prayers with, if it's thy will. Look, if it's in the book, it's his will. That, that book you hold... It is the testament. You might say the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. It tells you what his will is. If you can find it in the word, don't say if it's thy will. Say it is thy will. Because if he wrote it and he had it pinned for you, it's because he wants you to have it. And faith that understands God and sees his love provided it will say yes to it. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes and You know what that amen means? So be it. It means consider it done. And so we got to take that if it's thy will out when we know the will. Now Jesus prayed if it's thy will. He talked about God's will being done because that wasn't. That was, that was a father if this cup can pass from me. That was a different situation, and there's going to be things in your life at times that you can rightfully say if it's your will to. You can rightfully ask for his guidance on direction on. But if it's written in the book and it's promised, then we're supposed to say, Amen. Let it be. So be it. He loves you. I mean, that's, that's really today's message. The way to get rid of fear. Just keep driving it into yourself. Yeah, but he loves me. But he loves me. He loves me. To the degree that you understand that, to the degree you can walk in faith. Your faith level will never rise above your understanding of love. It just can't happen. You've got to have an understanding. If you doubt he loves you, you will live in fear. If you, if you think he's mad at you, that he's punishing you, you will live in fear. He's not mad at you. Jesus Christ appeased, his blood appeased God's anger towards sin. You know in the movies when they would sacrifice someone to appease the gods? The truth of that is that was Jesus. And the anger that God had not towards man but towards sin, Jesus took that on. So that when God looks at you, he no longer sees your sin. If you're in Christ, he sees you in Christ Jesus. The righteousness message that you have been made righteous, not earned righteous, you were made righteous, and that he calls it a free gift will set you free from the law of sin and death. It will set you free from what the old covenant had to live under. It's it's one of the most beautiful messages there is. And if you want to be free from fear, you've got to accept the fact, not that you deserve to be in Christ Jesus, but that you are. And that's what faith does. Faith accepts what God says over what we feel. I don't feel righteous every day either. Quite a few times a day I feel unrighteous. Quite a few times a day I want to live unrighteous. But I have accepted and chosen to believe that God's word is true, that Jesus died for me, and that God loved me enough to send Jesus to take on my sin nature, to take on what I deserved, and that within three days, he took all of that on himself, and when he rose out of that grave, he brought me out of that grave with him, free from condemnation, Free from the hold of sin. Do I ever mess up? Oh, yeah. Let's just call it what it is. Do I ever sin? Yes. But I have the blood. 
I have the blood. And Jesus loved me enough to do that for me. And God loved me enough to do that for me. And when I accept that, then I will not be afraid to activate my faith. I won't hold back from activating my faith. And until we get the love issue settled, you're not going to activate your faith. You're going to live in fear. Go with me to 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, starting in verse 16. First John 4, 16. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. We, we, we gain more understanding of it. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. What? What? Did y'all read that? Why are we not afraid to, to face him? Because we have confidence that we live like Jesus here in this world. That might make a really great confession to get up and say in the mornings. We can face him with confidence. Adam's, Adam's trouble was he couldn't face God with confidence because he was walking in sin. But we're walking in righteousness, so we can face God with confidence. We can come to him. Such love has no fear. None. Not a. Such love, when we understand this, we will not have fear. We won't. When we understand that kind of love, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. Hmm. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. The King James Version in this says fear has torment. Fear carries with it a torment. But there's no love in that. If you're living under the pressure and the torment of fear, you need to study God's love for you. Yes, faith. But faith's only activated when you understand his love. Let's start at ground zero, love. Everything that we inherit from God starts with love. Fear's not just dangerous because it keeps us from believing God. It's dangerous because it makes us believe the bad. And it hadn't even happened. That's, that's the crazy thing about fear is it hadn't even happened. We're just fearing it happened. So not only does it keep us from walking in faith, in what God has already provided. But it makes us believe that what we're fearing is actually truth, and it's not. Fear never tells the truth. Fear always has a lie attached to it. How do I know that? Because fear comes from Satan. He's the father of lies. The scripture's pretty plain about nailing him on that. We all know that faith is a force that changes circumstances, but do we realize that fear is too? What, what wasn't even going to happen if you get into fear? Fear can draw that thing to us. Let's call fear out for what it is. I love that song. Fear, he is a liar. Don't you love that song? Let's call it out for what it is. It is a lie. If it's fear, it's attached to the devil, and it's not a whole truth. It may have a truth in it. He's great at that. Attaching a truth to a lie to make it easier for you to believe. But whatever he's telling you you can't do or you can't receive or you can't walk in, it's a lie. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Anybody around here ever heard that passage before? If you put that in the negative of what fear is, if faith is the substance of things hoped for, what is fear? 
It'll become the substance of the things you're fearing that you don't want. And that's where a lot of people put their concentration. Instead of put their concentration on faith and what they hope for, they put their concentration on what they're afraid of. And there's a power to it. And, and, and I want us to recognize that. I don't want us to focus on the negative. We're going to flip this thing here in a minute. But I do want us to call it out for what it is. Fear is a force. It's a force, and it needs to be dealt with. It's a negative force that changes circumstances. And we need to hate fear. To hate it. You need to hate it when you're afraid of something. You need to hate it when you're dreading something. You need to call it out and say, you know what, I've been dreading this. Why? Why? Why am I dreading this? Call it out from behind the trees. Call it what it is. Make it face love and see what happens. What if Adam would have walked out behind the tree and faced love? Why are we, why are we hiding in fear when it's love that's waiting for us? It, we're just going to call it out today. It's all I know. Fear becomes the substance of the things we worry about. Worry is fear. Worry is fear. We, we kind of weaken the fear word by calling it worry or concern. I'm concerned about, because we know not to use the fear word around here, right? So I want us to really get really conscious of what words could fall under the title fear. Dread, worry, concern, okay? Y'all can probably come up with some others. You can email those to me. I'd be interested to see what, what, I, might, what I might be overlooking that's really the enemy called fear that I'm using other words for. So if you can think of some, I don't care if y'all shout some out right now. Y'all think of any? Uneasy. Uneasy. That's good. I can't. Oh, that's good, Greta. That'll preach. Anxious. Yeah, that's a good one. Y'all come up with some more. You can email them to me because I want to hear them. Fear causes us to see what hasn't even happened. That's what it does. It, it gives us a visual. Just like faith gives you a visual of what God has promised, fear will give you a visual. It, it makes it real, and it's not even real. It hasn't even happened. Where faith is giving you a visual of what has already happened. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. That's a promise. But it's a promise that's already secured in what Jesus did. What the enemy's offering you is fear of something that hasn't even happened, but what faith is giving you a picture of is what has already happened in Jesus Christ. And there's a huge difference. Big difference there. There's this amazing account in the Bible of a man named Job. Don't fear the book of Job. We're going to cover it sometime. A lot of people, a lot of Christians just like, mm, I'm not reading that book of Job like there's a curse on it or something. It's actually a fascinating account of a man named Job. A whole book in the Bible was written about him. Perhaps there's something in there that we might need to see. Job loved God. I'm not going to tell you the whole story of Job because it is a book. We'll cover it another time. But no matter what happened to Job, and there was a lot that happened to him, Job refused to curse God and give up. Though his wife tried to get him to curse God and die, Job did not. He, he went through a lot of things, and there's a lot of life lessons in there. But I want to pick out Job 3.25. I think it might be one of the most powerful portions of the book of Job. For, day, for today's teaching, we're going to pick out the one about fear, which you'll, you'll find out was really what caused Job to go through a lot of things. Job 3.25 out of the Amplified says, For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me. And just take that one phrase right there. For the thing that I greatly fear comes upon me. And ask yourself the question, What am I afraid of? What am I fearing? And that of which I am afraid befalls me. It comes on me. I was not or am not at ease, nor had I or have I rest, nor was I or am I quiet, 
and trouble came and still comes upon me. There is a humongous life lesson right there. The thing which I greatly fear comes upon me. And if that doesn't make you want to get fear out, I don't know what would. What a truth. You know what he's saying? Fear is a force that's drawing to me what I'm afraid of. What's happened to me, the root of it was fear. That's powerful. I want to give you all a little personal and I, I don't like to open up a lot about things I've dealt with. But I think I can on this one. And when Wade was killed, when my son was killed, Easter Sunday 2013, so much of life changed. Our family dynamics changed. Our church dynamics changed. Uh, a lot of things changed. But in me, and, and y'all knew those things. Y'all went through those things, walked with us through those things. But one thing I was not prepared for, which obviously I wasn't prepared for any of that, was the change that I had to deal with in myself, with fear. I became afraid of everything. And I got up here and preached the Word, stayed in the Word, worked my way through it. But there was a time that I was afraid to get in the car. I'm talking about break out in a sweat, afraid to get in the car. And I think later I shared these things with Chelsea, and, and I know I shared them with Rusty when I, once I got them partially dealt with, but at the time I couldn't even speak of it. I, it was, I have never dealt with fear before in my life, like that kind of... It just shut me down like I couldn't function. And so I used to not understand people with social anxiety or uh, afraid of heights or claustrophobia or, or things like that. I, I, did, I had no understanding of that whatsoever. I just could not understand that kind of fear. And when Wade was killed, suddenly I was, I was faced with all of these fears. And I, I didn't really... I had to really dig to find the, the root and trace it back to the fact that it, it came from Wade being killed. But I would be in a booth in a restaurant, and it, if I was on the inside of the booth, it was over with. I was coming out. And you know, that, that was not normal for me. I had never even had that thought before. The only time I ever got claustrophobic is when my big brother and I were wrestling when we were little, and he would hold me down. You don't do that to a girl. You know. And I would look at him and say, I've got that funny feeling. And when he knew when I said I got that funny feeling, all body parts were off limits. I was coming out. Whatever I had to kick, hit, punch, poke, I was coming up. That's the only time I'd ever experienced that feeling. And I would get that feeling. Tanya and I went to Hawaii. We got on, I was okay on the big plane. We got on the small plane. I'm telling you, I about... The thought came, I can take that door. I, and I'm serious. Y'all, this was not who I was before. But fear took a root in me. And I, and I, I didn't even, the family was going to Branson uh, just to get away. We were, you know, in a big legal fight, still are. Um, and I just needed to get away, and so the, all the family decided to go together to spend some time together. I didn't want to get in the car. What do you do with that? What do you do with that social anxiety? What do you do with claustrophobia? What do you do with gripping fears? You've got to face them with love. That has to be the answer. And do I still have the thoughts? Oh, yeah. Enemy sees to it. But when those thoughts come, I don't hide. I come out. I let God call it out to love. But He loves me. He loves me. And what I had to do is come to, to grips with what if I die? I mean, that's, that's the ultimate, right? To suffer and to die. 
You know what God did for me? He took that fear away from me. And he faced it with eternal life. That on my worst day, on my worst day, I win. Because of love. And once he took the fear of death, I just can, I can look fear when it comes, and I still have to deal with it, especially in a booth in a restaurant. I, the only thing I can figure out from that is because the way Wade was killed, you know, the way he was trapped, is that I don't want to be trapped. I, I don't want to be held back. I don't want to be held in. And it, but I, have to, I can't answer that with my experience from Wade. I have to answer that with my experience from God. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So I share that with you, not to get any kind of pity from you or attention from you, but to say every single one of us in here has had to face fear with love. And it is the only thing there's not a pill that can take care of that for you. There's not. I could take a pill to calm me, but I would still be held captive. Love will set you free. His love for you will set you free. Faith and fear are both drawing forces. My dad used to say they were both magnets. Faith and fear are both magnets. They're magnets pulling either what we hope for or what we fear towards us. But the scripture said love would expel, it would repel fear. I love that. It'll expel it, it will repel fear. When fear faces love, the love of God. So let fear face love and see what happens. There's no healthy fear. And I've used those words before. Todd, do not send me snake pictures all this week. Last time I mentioned snakes from the pulpit, I got tortured by certain congregation members with pictures of snakes. He's just trying to get me over my fear. I used to say, it's not a fear, it's a healthy fear. There is no healthy fear. Fear is an ugly word. It's a four-letter word in your vocabulary, and you need to get rid of it. The only fear that's good is the fear of God, and that is a respect and awe of his greatness and his goodness. That is not a fear as in hiding from him. Fear is not a feeling. It is a spirit. I'll never forget Jeremy Pearson said that. I think it was the last time he was here. Fear is not a feeling. It's a spirit. It's the spirit of the enemy. It's not the spirit of God. And if you see fear as a spirit, not just a feeling, you'll get it out like a snake in your house. And I have a great story on that one, but I'll tell you another time. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. You're all familiar with it, I'm sure. For God has not given us the spirit of, but of, and of, and a. That's how he expects us to live. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. If he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, who did? God gave us the spirit of, the pow of power, not helplessness, not hiding, but of power. That's a power that can change circumstances, not live under them. He gave us the spirit of love and a sound mind, not a crazy mind that's afraid. Hebrews 2. And y'all don't get afraid. We're not, we're not covering all these scriptures that are on your notes today. So don't let fear in. I love you enough not to cover all of those and to let you go eat lunch. Those are going to be for your benefit. You'll, we'll get to it in a minute. Hebrews 2, verse 14. We covered this. Oh, y'all. Okay. Just please me here for a minute. How many of you were not here Wednesday night? Do y'all want to hear what you missed? We started a study on heaven. I'm so sorry. I, it was so good Wednesday night. We're, we're going to continue it this Wednesday, so if you're interested, we'll be here. We covered this scripture, Hebrews 2, 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, 
He too, Jesus, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy, destroy, destroy him who holds the power of death. That is, the devil. And free, free, free Susan and those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. That is an amazing clip from that passage of Scripture. The power of death was fear. The power of death was fear. The power of death was fear. If you get rid of the fear, death has no power. Do you know what destroyed it? Love. He came in the flesh so that he could destroy the power of death. That's love. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, say it with me, church, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever... Thank you. He took fear out of the equation, put love in its place. And when you take fear out of the equation and put love in its place, it changes everything. You know I don't do math, but I can do this kind of math. Death plus fear equals fear. It equals death. That's just what you're going to get. You put death plus fear, you're going to get death. You put diabetes plus fear, you're going to get diabetes. You put hurt plus fear, you're going to get hurt. Fear doesn't it doesn't do anything but bring more of the same. But if you put love in the equation, death plus love equals eternal, eternal life. What? Oh, it changes everything. Diabetes plus love, it equals health. Hurt plus love equals forgiveness. You put love in the equation, love changes everything. If you're in fear, study love. That's today's message. I just took a lot longer to say it. If you're dealing with fear, study love. I gave you a whole page full of scriptures about love. Y'all got those? Some of them we covered. Some of them we didn't. I was trying to see if there's one in here. That, oh, Psalm 8. I'll look up the macro skies. Dark and enormous, your handmade sky jewelry, the moon, the stars mounted in their settings. And I look at my micro self and I wonder, why do you bother with me? Why take a second look my way? Yet we've so narrowly missed being God's bright with Eden's dawn light. You put us in charge of your handcrafted world, repeated to us your Genesis charge, made us lords of sheep and cattle and apacas, even, oh wait, even animals. My alpaca people are back here. <laughs> Even animals out in the wild, birds flying and fish swimming, whales singing in the ocean's deep. God, brilliant Lord, your name echoes around the world. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin, but not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. You're more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Expected end. Isn't that a beautiful word? You know what you fear? What you hadn't expected. You, you fear what could be. But he gave you an expected end. He's already written the end of your story. We just have to walk it out. We just got to walk it out. So I put a lot of love scriptures. Hmm. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? What can possibly happen when God's already done what he's done for me? I'm telling you, if you'll take those and you'll meditate on them, love will repel the fear in your life and you'll be set free. Amen?
Y'all can stand with me. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.